and I'm the owner of All Strong Fitness, a personal training company in Iowa that works with individuals with special needs. Um, I can help uh, strengthen your body, help with nutrition, and do a lot of different things. So um, if you are interested uh, potentially about working with me, I can give you my details um, after the call. Otherwise, you can reach out to Kara and ask her for more information as well. But um, I wanted to come on today to talk a little bit about nutrition. And nutrition is something where there is a lot of different aspects and things that you can get into. And because of that, it can be very, very confusing on kind of where to start and where to go. And um, it's something that even me today, uh, multiple years into learning about this stuff, I still am learning new things every day. So um, although there is a lot to get confused in, I'm going to try to make this a kind of simplified version of nutrition to help you guys not only for your performance on sporting events, but also in health. So um, these performance plates we're going to talk about offer an easy solution and kind of a way to conceptualize uh, making your plate for yourself. And for a lot of us, that's kind of where the confusing part comes in. There's so many different foods and so many different ways that you can fit it into your diet. So doing this, um, for me at least, kind of takes some of that legwork away to make it easier, um, hopefully for you guys as well. So um, when it comes to nutrition as well, I do want to reiterate, there is a lot of different ways that this can work for everyone. For everyone. And you need to find out what works best for you. Um, what works for me likely doesn't work the best completely for you. Um, there'll be some similarities, but overall, it's what you can sustain in a diet is uh, what will be the best for you. So um, if you haven't already, you can turn to page 29 in your booklet. And if you don't have your booklet with you, that's okay. Um, I'll just talk through this the best I can for you. But page 29 will kind of have some of this information I'll be referencing and talking about. So I'll give a couple moments here. Uh, does anyone have any just initial questions? I haven't really said too much yet, but before we get kind of into some of the content. I don't have my booklet yet. And that's totally okay. I'm just gonna uh, try to explain uh, the best okay. I can with this. Um, you can take notes too if you have pen and paper. Yeah, I have. I, I have a question. Either, Logan. What was that? I have I a question. Have, oh, um, I don't have mine either, Logan. That's that's no okay, problem. Mallory. Okay, Mary Kate, yeah, what I was your a, question? Um. Okay. So with the, are you gonna explain more about like? even the weighing aspects or could I ask you separate about that like when you're like weighing how much the ounces and stuff like because I got a digital we got a digital scale for Christmas yeah good question so um this isn't really going to have um much of a weighing thing it's mainly going to be kind of how you can take a plate like a dinner plate and cut it up into um, an easy way for you to make your food. So for example, if you're at a restaurant or like a buffet or something and you don't have your scale, this will offer you a really easy and intuitive way to kind of almost guesstimate how much as, uh, you might have like for a scale. Um, but after this, we can talk a little bit about the scale, um, maybe afterwards in a separate Zoom call or something. But good question. This will be more focused on just uh, looking at portion sizes on your plate and not so much actual numbers. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Okie dokie. Well, that should be hopefully enough time to get some stuff together. Um, but for these performance plates, what we're broken down into is three different training days, uh, light, moderate, and heavy training days. And in those training days, um, I have three different plates for us. And when we're looking at the plate, there's three different categories of food on the plate itself. And that's uh, lean protein, fruits and vegetables, and then grains and starches. So uh, typically when you hear food groups, you may have heard um, grains, fruits, vegetables, dairy, uh, and protein. 
those are very important, but for this, we're gonna simplify it even more and lump fruits and vegetables together, lump grains and starches together, and then lump the protein together, okay? So uh, for starters, when we're talking about a training day, um, we'll look at the light training day. So a light training day is a day uh, where you aren't really gonna have much uh, working out or sports or really anything. Um, you could do some light walking, uh, some recovery, some stretching, uh, foam rolling, you know, something light that gets your body going, but your heart rate shouldn't really get up a whole lot. You shouldn't feel like you're straining a bunch. Um, another way we can kind of term a light training day might even just be a complete rest day. Um, my light training days, quote unquote, are typically rest days. I might go for a 30 minute walk, but other than that, I don't really do anything. And since I'm not really doing anything, I'm not gonna need overall as much food and fuel to get me through the day. So if we look at the light training day plate, we notice that uh, lean protein is covering about a quarter of the plate and then fruits and vegetables are covering about half of the plate. And the reason why they're covering half the plate is because typically fruits and vegetables are lower in calories but also really high in nutrients uh, that'll help keep us full. So um, compared to days where you might need to eat a little bit more, this day you don't need to eat quite as much. So basically we're trying to um, fill it with things that are going to keep you full longer and um, help sustain you more um, versus the grains and starches, which are gonna cover the last quarter of the plate Grains and starches are great because they offer a very fast, uh, digestible way for you to get fuel. Um, and they're also very easy to eat a lot of. Um, and that's kind of the difference between fruits and veggies. Fruits and veggies, you can't, you can eat a lot of them, but you're gonna get full really, really quickly. Grains and starches, not so much. You can probably eat an entire bowl of pasta and be ready for two more, no problem. So. Um, that's what I would recommend for the light training day. Um, something you'll notice throughout all these days is that the lean protein stays the same. So it's a, still a quarter of the plate, regardless of whether you're training hard or having a rest day. And this is because protein recommendations don't really change a whole lot. If you're getting the uh, general recommended amount of protein every day, it doesn't really uh, matter so much if you're training extra hard or if you're not really training at all. Um, just meeting that recommended um, guideline is kind of the basis. So after the light training day, we'll look at the moderate training day. Um, this could be a day that has a workout or sports. So uh, maybe you go to the gym, do a little bit of walking on the treadmill, lift some weights for a little bit, um, that could be uh, one example, or maybe you have a sports practice, um, an hour of basketball, um, maybe you even have a game or something. Um, this would typically be what we'd consider a moderate day because you are doing some physical activity and you do need fuel to not only um, fuel your performance of the activity, but also to help you recover as well. So the main difference that changes between this is that we add a little bit of grains and starches and take away a little bit of the fruits and vegetables. And this is again, because you want that fuel that you get from grains and starches to help you um, not only perform in your sport or um, uh, workout, but also to help you recover too. Uh, your muscles need energy afterwards to help refill for the next time you work out, okay? Um, so if we're looking at kind of a timeline, this could also be about um, less than an hour, maybe up to an hour of activity a day. And then the last one we're gonna look at is the heavy training day. Now, a uh, heavy training day is what I would constitute as potentially a uh, multiple day event, um, excuse me, a multiple event day where you could have both a workout and sports. Um, maybe you'll have two workouts. 
Uh, maybe you'll have two back-to-back -back games. Regardless, you are using a lot of energy. And because of that, you need to replenish your energy. So in the heavy training day plate, half of the plate is actually filled with grains and starches this time. So that means that the last fourth is filled with fruits and vegetables, and then the other fourth is lean protein. And again, the reason why now we have a fourth of our plate is grains and starches is because it's very readily and easily uh, digestible fuel to help our muscles and body perform the best in the events, but also recover. And since you're doing multiple events, you're going to simply need more of that um, starches and grains to get you through them. Um, when you're talking about length of an activity, this would likely be greater than an hour. I would say even um, probably two to two and a half hours. So um, a good example of a heavy training day could be, um, well, let's say, I, th I think talking about Special Olympics, like um, actual events would be good. So maybe you have um, a track and field event in the morning, and maybe you have a track and field event in the afternoon. And then in between that, maybe you were doing some light active recovery, like going on a stationary bike for a little bit just to help uh, keep the blood flowing and prepare you for the next game. You are doing a lot of activity during that. And because of that, again, we need way more grains and starches to help fuel that activity. Um, and when it comes to examples of kind of what grains and starches are, what lean protein would be and what fruits and vegetables, in uh, page 29 of the booklet, I tried to list a few examples of kind of what you could go through and what you could outline. And um, so I'll just go over a couple of these just for individuals who uh, might not have seen. So uh, lean protein, um, this could be lean ground beef, um, lean ground turkey, egg whites or eggs, um, some fish or even chicken breast fruits and vegetables. You guys could probably list off a bunch for me, but um, <laughs> broccoli, asparagus, bananas, apples, these are going to be something where you'll have to play around with and find your preferences. Because I know for a fact that I love a lot of fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. but I know that some people might be a little more picky and they have their preferences. So again, find what you like and something that you can stick with and fit into these performance plates. And then the last thing, grains and starches. Um, this could be whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, uh, oatmeal, rice, corn, peas, uh, potatoes. Those have a lot of energy in them and are usually easy to eat a lot of. Uh, so you can see how, you know, if you eat a couple of potatoes, how you can get so much energy from those versus a um, a couple of cups of broccoli. You're not going to get as much energy and you're going to feel way more full on the broccoli. So. Um, I kind of went through that maybe a little quick. Um, however, I feel like I got through everything. So I'll kind of open it up to questions. If anyone has anything specific, feel free to ask me and I'll try to steer you in the right direction. Rick. I got a question. Sure. Okay. I'm told I need, I should have high protein meals and high calories. Yeah, so the, the tricky part about um, protein is that it's very, very satiating, which basically means that it helps you stay full much, much easier um, compared to other things. So for you, since you need to get high protein and high calories, you might need to look towards more um, fattier sources of protein to simply get more calories. Um, this isn't the case for everyone. And I yeah. wouldn't recommend that everyone eat really, really high fat uh, protein, but there are some individuals who do have a hard time gaining weight. So, yep. so picking, did. Oh, go ahead. So yeah, they want me to, you know, to, it'll stay while I'm at, at the very least, all the gain. So I'm going to start doing good at maintaining that. Now I'm at 95 pounds. I hope that I can weigh at least 100 pounds and keep it at 100. Yeah. 
So when it comes to your training plate, I would highly recommend for you to be eating the heavy training day plate, which means that uh, half of your plate is grains and starches. So either pasta, uh, bread, potatoes, half of your plate is going to be that. And then a quarter of it could be fruits and vegetables. And then the other quarter of it could potentially be um, a little bit fattier of meat. So maybe something like steak, um, chicken thighs. You could do leaner sources of meat, but maybe adding a little bit of olive oil in that, um, having a little peanut butter on the side. That'll just increase the overall calories you have, um, but won't make it go too overboard. So um, yeah, try, try your best to just eat a little bit more of those grains and starches because okay. those are, are really good. Gonna... Butter, add butter to the vegetables because that will be a little milk calories. Yeah, you can add add a little bit. Um, olive oil is a good one too. Um, there's I, I like peanut butter. Peanut butter is one I always use if I want to add um, a little bit extra calories to my thing, uh, my meal. However, again, this isn't for everyone. If you do have um, issues kind of keeping weight off and you are wanting to lose weight, I wouldn't recommend this for you. Um, this is for somebody who has troubles keeping weight on and um, maybe even wanting to gain a little bit of weight. So if you're looking to gain weight, highly recommend the heavy training plate. Um, light training plate would probably be a little bit better if we're trying to um, lose weight. However, remember you are trying to fuel per for uh, performance as well, so that's important, and we just want to make sure we're getting overall a balanced diet. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes it's just as hard to gain weight for people as it is for other people to lose yep. weight. <laughs> yep, yep, I hear you. Yep, everyone's Thank you a little so different. Much. You're welcome. How much uh, size of meat do you have to have? One more time. Like how much um. Like meat source, you have to have like the size and ounces. So usually when we're talking about um, ounces, usually about four to six ounces is what constitutes a serving. And um, if you think about that as in like a fourth of your plate, that'll be right around the ballpark. So I know some uh, pieces of meat are a little bit thicker than the others, but um, don't really do your best to just try to keep it about a quarter of your plate. If it's a little bit more, that's okay. If it's a little bit less than time, sometimes that's okay. But uh, usually about four to six ounces is a serving. Um, so that's usually where I would stick with. Okay. I have one. Um, I'm doing the low carb diet, but is it, do I need to deal uh, less vegetables or? No, actually, if you're doing um, low carb, vegetables are a great option because vegetables typically are pretty low in carbs um, and high in fiber, which is um, kind of one of the, the good things about the low carb diet is you're eating so much of these vegetables and meat, ideally that you're feeling really full and you don't really want to eat a lot more. Um, so yeah, I would actually, I would actually uh, increase vegetables if, if you feel like you um, can and would want to eat a little bit more because that's not only going to help you get more nutrients like fiber, vitamins and minerals, um, but it's also going to help you feel a little bit more full and maybe you won't eat quite as much. All right, thank you. What if we only eat one meal a day and we're full the rest of the day? So I'm curious, what, um, what in your meal, what is in your meal in like a normal, typical one meal a day? It's just whatever I feel like eating. So would you, would you ever consider maybe eating um, more frequent smaller meals? to just make sure you're getting a lot of nutrients because what this comes down to is you want to make sure you're eating enough nutrients uh, not just for your activity but also to help you feel good throughout the day and I'm kind of worried that if you're only eating um, one big meal a day 
that you're not getting enough nutrients, not only for your special Olympics activities, but to think well and communicate well and just do the daily things that you need. Um, because I know for a fact, when it comes to um, protein, I would, I would assume that you're probably maybe getting like one serving, maybe like four to six ounces, if that. And that's just uh, not a lot of protein when it comes down to it. Um, so I would want to make sure um, you seem like somebody who might get full really easily just eating um, one bigger meal. I would try to cut it down into smaller, more manageable meals. And again, find things that you like, but where you can be consistent. Okay. Smaller, more frequent meals is what I would say. King, King Harvey just got in. We had trouble getting in. He has a question. So what healthy meals would you suggest? Ain't no. Uh, so we, we missed the whole first part, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I guess um, this, <laughs> what I would recommend just as a whole is that you want to, um, well, I guess I should ask, do you have the, um, the team fit packet yeah like, i'll get it for you yes okay cool because that'll kind of help at least explain this a little more great okay. okay keen on page 29 of your playbook yeah here's some of the details okay. that we talked about so those everything is right there that you can look at um did you want to know some like specific maybe examples of healthy meals is that what you were asking for too yes yeah. Sure. So I'll give you a couple of um, examples that I like. Um, but again, this is something that I like, and you'll kind of have to um, find something that works for you and what you like, because what I like is likely a little different from what you want. So um, a really common and simple example, I really like uh, chicken breast. So a fourth of my plate would likely be about a serving of chicken breast. And then I um, work out usually probably a moderate to heavy training day. So we'll just say um, a heavy training day. So I have that quarter of my plate is chicken breast. And then the other half of my plate would likely be, um, I would say I like oatmeal, um, but potatoes are probably one of my favorite uh, sources of a starch. So maybe a couple kind of medium-sized potatoes. That would cover about half my plate um, with ketchup. That's kind of just how I like to do it. Um, whatever you want, you don't need condiments. Feel free to add them in there if it makes it more enjoyable for you. And then when it comes to vegetables, um, broccoli and Brussels sprouts are probably my favorite vegetables at the moment. So uh, the last quarter of my plate would be um, either broccoli or Brussels sprouts, maybe a little bit of both. The key back. That would be an example of something that, um, even though it's really simple and basic, I could seriously eat that every single day. Uh, I love that combination and it's something that I enjoy. And as it's something I've reiterated, that's what it's all about. Finding something when it comes to these plans or just your diet as a whole that you can sustain and work the best into your life. Because if you can't sustain it, it's not gonna be something worthwhile that's gonna benefit for you. Um, consistent nutrition is really important, but again, that's the key word. It needs to be consistent. If you're only doing these meals, um, like they're set up once or twice a week, and then the rest of your week, you're going out with friends, eating pizza, wings, uh, cookies, cakes, whatever, and just throw it all away. You're not gaining nearly as much out of it as much as you could be, um, being consistent. So I know that was kind of a tangent there, but hopefully I gave you at least one idea. Um, also, I, I did give a bunch of examples of the different foods. So if you kind of look through those, you can kind of piecemeal um, a recommended meal. So maybe you need um, a lean protein. So I want to have eggs. And then for vegetables, you could do um, peppers and then starches. You could do like a couple pieces of toast. That'd be another example. That'd be like a good breakfast one. Okay. Um, so um, speaking of healthy and maintaining your weight, here's my question. I have constipation 
and I'm trying to stay healthy and I want to do everything I can to maintain myself. And I was wondering if there was any anything I can use to help with my constipation and what kind of foods can I use to maintain my weight so that because since the holidays are over and I literally worked super hard with Weight Watchers to um, help maintain myself. Sure. Yeah, so um, there's uh, two things to that. One, um, there might potentially be a medication that you're taking. Um, I don't know for sure. And I don't want to yes, get nitty gritty, but um, yeah. oh, okay. So there, so Miralax is um, usually supposed to help constipation. Um, on top of that, though, there might be um, a few other medications you're taking that kind of increases the prevalence of uh, constipation. So just kind of realizing that, you know, um, it might be something that you'll just struggle with for a little bit is kind of part of it. And then consistently taking the Miralax is great. When it comes to actual nutrition, um, sticking with those light training day plates where half of your plate is fruits and vegetables will be the best for you because not only fruits and vegetables have a lot of fiber in them, which will help keep you full and help you kind of maintain or potentially lose a little bit of weight, It'll also, uh, fiber helps you with constipation. It'll add a little bit of um, bulk to your, um, <laughs> this may sound funny, but your poop. And it'll basically oh. help you eat, um, excuse me, it'll help you um, be more regular. So that's kind of the main purpose of fiber is to add a little bit of bulk and it helps, um, helps you just be more regular. So um, the more fruits and vegetables, also, water is a huge thing. I know personally, if I'm not getting enough water throughout the day, I get constipated as well. And even days that I don't work out, I sweat a lot throughout the day. I'm just like, just a sweater. I don't, I don't know how it is. I can thank my mom and dad for those genetics, but I sweat <laughs> a lot, even on days that I don't work out. So because of that, I need to drink a lot more water that I than I even think I need to do. So I always have a water bottle near me and I'm pounding water consistently throughout the day that really helps keep me regular and kind of stave off the constipation. And remind me, what were the foods you can use to maintain the weight? Cause like I said, I lost like, uh, it would have been 30 pounds and I'm at like 200, but I was like 198 back then. Yeah. What, um, well, l let me ask you, what foods were you eating um, to help you lose the weight initially? Um, I always love doing my vegetables like peppers. I've done my fruits. I've done cucumbers. Um, sometimes to add some more flavor, I dip my um, peppers with salsa to make it um, good, but still have the, the amount of calories. Like I set myself up, oh, I want to eat this much today and then see how it goes for the week. And then that's how I do it. And then for my special treats, I save up and then I make sure I have enough for the treats during restaurant days, which was kind of tricky, but I made it manageable. Yeah. So you actually answered your own question there um, with the vegetables. That was the main thing that helped you um, get down. And I would recommend, I mean, what you're doing seems to be working. So I wouldn't really deviate that much. Um, just make sure when it comes to like add-ons into your diet, like the- Yeah, um, like how do you go back to your normal foods, but still go to stay the same weight and stuff? So that's the kind of tricky thing. And what I was trying to kind of preach throughout this is that you need to find something that's sustainable for you. Because unfortunately, mm -hmm. diet and health and exercising isn't something where you can just um, follow something for a few months and then go back to what you were eating before entirely. Mm -hmm. It's something that you need to kind of find a balance between, you know, I'm still eating healthy, I'm getting all these nutrients in, but at the same time, like I can have like a cupcake every now and again, I can have um, a little bit of uh, sweets and stuff. 
but it really is just about moderation and kind of um, incorporating those things, just not having them the main portion. The main portion of your diet should be these vegetables, um, whole grains, and lean sources of protein. And then just a simple, small, tiny bit of it is going to be those treat things. And, you know, I'm not saying you should never have treats. I have treats every single day. But the amount of treats I have are very, very small compared to my entire diet. Oh, I see. So the smaller part. Okay, that yep. makes more sense. Yep. You have to look at it as your diet as a whole. Um, eat, not eating one cupcake won't throw everything off. But if you're eating a lot of cupcakes, that could potentially lead to um, issues in your weight and health, et cetera. Correct. Mm -hmm. gotcha right. now. and I think that will be the last question for the day um Logan did you have any closing remarks you wanted to make we're just about at that time yeah yeah so um again finding something that's sustainable for you is the name of the game when it comes to nutrition um these are just guidelines for you and you don't need to follow these to a T um, if you'd like to feel free, but um, find something that you can sustain and um, work with for yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it should help you move into the new year. So I appreciate Special Olympics Iowa again, uh, for letting me come on if you are interested in um, learning about our uh, per my personal training services and want to get started I offer both in person and virtual training. Um, feel free to reach out to allstrongfitness.org. That's my website. Otherwise, um, you can email me at allstrongfitnessllc at gmail.com. And Kara can help get you some of that information as well if you are interested. But really appreciate the time, guys. Thanks for letting me come on. And um, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so much. And you'll see Logan a little bit that more throughout the program. He'll be in some of the videos. Thank so you. make sure you keep looking for him. He's He'll be there. Also, his uh, Facebook page is linked on the Facebook post in the Stay Healthy group yesterday. So that's another easy way to track okay. him down. But oh. other than that, yep. Thanks again, Logan. And we'll see all you guys later. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye